This is a demonstration of Zipper Tubing's PRT1553 shielded cable repair kit. Uh, the uh, installation instructions can be found uh, on zippertubing.com. It's very important that you uh, download these instructions and there are sizing tables and detailed instructions for how to install and make these type of repairs. Um, PRT1553 is a variation of zipper tubing's PRTES material combined with our Z3250CN uh, tape. Uh, essentially what is going to happen is we're going to take a cable which has been damaged. In this case there's a coax cable that had the uh, insulation peeled back, it was scraped, and the shield itself has actually been torn slightly. Um, however, the primary wire inside has not been damaged. The PRT1553 kits are designed to repair the insulation jacket on the outside and minor EMI shield damage. If the EMI shield is damaged more than 180 degrees around the circumference of the of the uh, cable that's beyond the capability of this kit also if the primary wire insulation uh, if if it has been nicked or cut um, do not use this kit this kit is not designed as a uh, splice kit uh, it is simply designed to repair superficial damage that may have occurred uh, to the outer jacket and to the uh, to a localized area of the shield braid. Now to make this repair the first thing you want to do is determine what the uh, cable size is. In this case I've already measured it. It's uh, right at a quarter of an inch. So I go to the uh, installation instructions and find that there is a kit for uh, up to quarter inch and I have obtained a, a kit of a PR in a sample kit which is what I have here it's known as the Dash 3 but when you order material you actually want to uh, order the ZT number uh, for your own uh, applications. Um, this, this piece of material is ex essentially our uh, PRT ES material you can see the hot melt adhesive inside um, the metalized shielding fabric will be used to in, has a uh, pressure there's a strip of this material it has a pressure sensitive adhesive on the back and it is electrically conductive pressure sensitive adhesive and it'll be used to make the repair so when you have an app situation like this the first thing you want to do is come back and cut back about say a quarter of an inch or half inch on either side of the defect area and remove remove the jacket material now you want to be careful that you don't introduce any additional um, damage to the cable I'm going to cut off the piece of uh, jacket that was torn and essentially why you're doing this is to expose the undamaged braid so that you can um, uh, overlap the, the damage area with the metalized shielding fabric. And so let me take a little bit to get this to come off. Okay, there we go. It's starting to peel the jacket off. Now, ultimately, the PRT material will overlap this edge, and you will have a tight environmental seal when you're done, so there's uh, no fear that you're going to end up with a cable that will corrode or uh, fail down the road as a result of your repair. And uh, I'm going to use a pair of 
pair of cutters to help pull the insulation piece that I had cut. Uh, now I have a exposed shield on either side and the damaged area what I want to do is I want to dress the strands back away from the from the uh, damaged area where it's broken so that if I have any strands they fold back under my shield cloth and don't tend to want to be driven into the primary wire and create a short. Um, I'm going to cut this one back just a little more. We haven't quite got enough on this side to get a good tape over wrap. Okay, there we go. What you want to have is a um, maybe a quarter to half inch of exposed braid. Uh, now once the uh, damaged shield is pulled back away from itself, you can take the strip, the 1553 kit will include this strip of uh, shielding tape and you simply wrap it, start wrapping it around. The shield tape has shielding coverage of about 98%, so in almost every case the EMI shield tape has better shield performance than the actual braid that was on the cable. So you won't be degrading the EMI performance of the assembly uh, when you make this repair. In fact, uh, EMI lab tests have shown that the, uh, a repaired cable is indistinguishable from an undamaged cable. And okay, so now we've wrapped the shield cloth over the defect area and essentially we've jumpered across the damaged spot uh, and the next thing we want to do is install the uh, outer jacket now I'm gonna cut this down a little bit it's uh, longer than it really needs to be and I'll see if I can cut this so we leave the uh, leave the part number on it and a, a pair of scissors is your standard working tool when you're using PRT. Uh, any of the PRT uh, products are easily cut. A pair of scissors, you do like to get a nice cut, uh, but it's not terribly critical because PRT does not have a tendency to want to split. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install the, the uh, cable in the uh, tubing. I wrap the tubing around and peel the adhesive release liner back. Uh, not all the way, just uh, oh, maybe an inch or so. And wrap the non-adhesive edge over so I just cover the adhesive, exposed adhesive, and continue to do so until I get to the end of the part and work the uh, seam area down so that I know that I have good adhesive contact. Now this will move around at this point. Um, what I want to do is center the, uh, the outer jacket repair over the defect and like with all uh, PRT products you want to use a heat gun uh, with a nozzle that will re focus the heat on the adhesive overlap area you want to do this selectively also like all PRT products the material will start to shrink around a hundred and I'm sorry around 90 degrees C but um, a good uh, a good temperature range is around 120 to 130 degrees C to start the uh, process and uh, you don't have to put a tremendous amount of heat on it I'm going to look at it one more time and get it centered and we'll start heating it. Um, there's no there's no big rush on applying heat. You want to you can pull the heat back off the part um, repeatedly. But you want to limit your heat exposure to the overlap because it's double thick in that area and will take a lot more heat. 
uh, to shrink the inside part of the overlap. Now the rest of the tubing may actually shrink while you're doing this. You continue to apply heat there, it will eventually start to lay back down. And you may find on sizes like quarter inch and less that you actually end up with the part fully shrunk by the time you uh, uh, have adequately heated the overlap. Now it's possible to see the hot melt adhesive is starting to ooze out. What you want to do is come along and make sure the rest of the part is getting hot. Now you can see the adhesive overlap is pulling back a little. Just lightly tap it back down with your finger. You may want to allow that area to cool slightly. It's uh, The adhesive is starting to ooze out on the ends. Uh, this end isn't quite so much. Um, now as you continue to do this, uh, if you apply too much heat too quickly, you may cause the adhesive to expand inside so quickly that it wants to rupture the overlap flap. Um, again, there's nothing, there's no restriction on letting it cool briefly and then coming back and applying heat. Um, it's, there's no big rush on this. What you really would like to see is uh, adhesive ooze out 360, oops, 360 degrees around the repair and periodically go back and check the overlap and make sure that it's still intact well. And I'm starting to see adhesive all the way around. Maybe there's a little area here that could use some more heat. Uh, I would not worry about making the adhesive bleed out look pretty. Uh, as long as you have 360 degree bleed out, you know you have uh, coverage. And Normally your cable wouldn't be this easy to move. You'd be moving the heat gun around instead of the uh, of the cable. But for the demonstration, it's much easier to move the cable. And it looks like we have a pretty good adhesive flow. I'm go back and touch the overlap. Now this adhesive you see along the edge here is simply the transfer adhesive that held the tubing back together uh, when we first put it on before we started applying. We'll eventually rub that off. You do not want to remove or rub off the hot melt adhesive. The hot melt adhesive is your environmental seal. And I'm going to apply a little more heat on this side and right here. And it's looking pretty good. Okay, now what you want to do, you basically 99% done at this point. You want to let it cool sufficiently so that you can touch it without burning yourself. And if you happen to touch the hot melt adhesive, the adhesive, you want to wait till it's solidified enough that it doesn't stick to you. And then we'll come back and rub the overlap seam and remove the exposed adhesive. Um, depending on the size of your cable, there may be a very little uh, exposed adhesive or there may be quite a bit. Um, it, it really doesn't matter how much the overlap is pulled back as long as it's still overlapped uh, itself to some degree because the entire circumference inside has gone molten and bonded the, the outer sleeve on. So this, this adhesive that was used to hold the tubing together while we were putting it on is almost unnecessary at this point because the hot melt adhesive has, has bonded everything together. Now it's cooled down pretty good and those are solid enough I won't they won't stick to me to remove this we simply rub your rub this area with your thumb and do not use any uh, solvents to try and remove this just use a mechanical rub motion with your thumb and the material will ball up ahead of your thumb and you can remove it and discard it and you'll have a fairly clean assembly where you don't have a, a sticky adhesive mass of uh, left. And that looks pretty good. Get rid of that. And 
Now you can rub the material. Um, like I say, the hot melt has solidified. It's not hot anymore. And um, there you have a PRT 1553 repair. We successfully repaired the damage in the shield and we also repaired the damage in the insulated jacket.